So in this video we're going to be talking about parabolas. Now the big satellite dish at the back, that's a parabola and I'm going to get into that in another video but uh, in this video we're going to actually build a parabola which is a two-dimensional parabola and we're going to base it off a design that's been around for quite some time, it's well proven and that is the windsurfer. Now the windsurfer has been around for quite a long time and you've probably built one before a uh, back of a cereal box, stuck some aluminium foil to it and put it on one of your router antennas and it increases performance and it does uh, quite a really good job of increasing that performance. So I've come up with a different design using the original windsurfer but adding a different element on to take advantage of the properties of the windsurfer being a two-dimensional parabola but also taking advantage of the fact that it's not a 100% efficient parabola, it's only about 65 to 70% efficient. So what I mean by about 65 to 75% efficient is the fact that a parabola will take the actual radio waves and will bounce them off its surface and will bounce them into a common focal point. Now the focal point for this parabola is around this area here but I've constructed this quite large element in order so we can actually put this in different size parabolas and also take advantage of the overshoot. So with a much longer element we can actually increase the performance of this parabola by getting as much as those radio waves that are reflected off the back here down and through our coax. Now this is one that I actually build in the video, it's a design that I came up with and it's got this flat element to it here which I stuck to a piece of perspex and glued on here but then after I built this one I also built this one here and I haven't painted it yet and this one's built around a plastic tube now the plastic tube uh, I say later in the video that uh, I am looking for something with slightly smaller diameter but uh, it's built in the same way if uh, you watch the video on how to build this one you should be able to put this one together as well and uh, it basically performs the same but I, I do think it looks uh, a little bit better and before we go any further I just want to mention that this is not a parabola it's a sieve this is not a parabola and this is not a parabola at best they would be a reflector, they have no focal point and therefore they are not a parabola. There are so many videos of people sticking a USB stick in a sieve, it's uh, just untrue. But uh, a parabola is a mathematical curve and when you get into it there's quite a lot of mathematics involved but uh, down below I've put a link to a, a nice little program it's quite an old program and I have got it to run on my system quite easily and my system runs Windows 7 64-bit and uh, this program happily runs on it and you can input some different measurements there and uh, uh, different uh, curves to the parabola and uh, it will actually uh, draw up the uh, dimensions of a parabola and also show you exactly where that focal point is so uh, a really nifty little program if you want to go and uh, have a play with it and uh, come up with your own parabolas so but in this video we're going to actually uh, be building one that um, has been around for a while and it's proven and it works and that's the uh, windsurfer design okay so what you're going to have to do is download the template of course and there's a link in the description and print it out on some A4 paper and you're going to want some of this copper tape which I've shown you before in previous videos you can pick this up on eBay it's not that expensive and uh, it's also sold in the gardening section as a slug repellent and people will wrap this around their pots apparently uh, it deters slugs so uh, you're going to need some that's at least 70 millimeters wide in order to fit the actual template on there because we're going to actually glue this to here and then slowly and carefully with a craft knife you actually cut out that pattern so what you want to do is you want to cut out the template of the element like I have here and the two ends here make sure they're really nice and straight because that's where you're going to be joining the uh, two templates up in order to produce one long uh, continuous element with the uh, copper foil. So what I'm going to be doing next is applying some spray mount and mounting it to the copper tape and really taking my time getting it uh, 
lined up properly there and making sure it's nice and straight so I can go around with a craft knife and actually cut this pattern out from the uh, copper foil underneath. Now if you haven't got any spray mount a glue stick, water based glue stick will work just as well. So once you've got your element cut out then we're going to need something to actually mount it on and the way we're going to mount it is it's going to be stuck on here and it's going to fold back down underneath so the element is going to be like that. Now here I've got a piece of perspex you can use a piece of wood or anything that's quite rigid and it's 180 millimeters long and 65 millimeters across so the best way and the easiest way I've found to actually lay this down onto the perspex and get it all nice and straight and true and lined up is to actually start in the middle it's already puckering up there so I'll get my craft knife and just pull it away from that back in and get some scissors cut away just over an inch there and I'm going to actually start by lining this up right on that join and also making sure I've got it lined up with enough space either side so it doesn't overlap and then do one side first flip this down let's use a craft knife just to tease away that back in And slowly bring it down so it's nice and straight so we've got that side done and then the same on the other side. So I'm happy with uh, the way that's lying there now and it's a good idea as well to keep that um, template stuck down onto that copper as well because it adds a bit more strength to it when you're pulling it around and getting it nice and straight so what I can do now is just soak that in a little bit of water and then uh, that template should just come away. So now put your element to one side because we're not going to work on it for the moment we're actually going to move on to the parabola part of this antenna. Now I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, there's a very good template already out there on the internet for parabolic antenna and it's the classic windsurfer and I'll put a link in the description to where you can download this and you want to print it off, this is printed off onto A4 and you want to take this to your local photocopying shop and get them to blow it up to A3 so working on this template first what you want to find is some thin tin some kind of aluminium metal something you can use as a reflector that's uh, thin enough that you can still bend into a shape and you want to get some tin snips and cut it out and yes this did used to be a baking tray from Tesco's and uh, this is going to be perfect for our back reflector our parabolic reflector Next you want to take this part of the template and draw yourself a straight line down here connecting these two edges up because we're only interested in this parabolic curve here. And what you want to do is stick that down onto some plywood. This plywood's about uh, 12 millimeters, 12 and a half millimeters thick. I don't know what that is in old money, it's probably half an inch. And cut it out so we've got that parabolic shape. And what we're going to actually do is connect this up with some screws and some glue and bend that round into our parabolic shape. And this here, this is where the focal point of this antenna is. And we're going to cut a groove in here in order to slide our driven element into this part of the antenna here. And then we'll have the coax coming underneath and through the reflector so we can connect it to our adapter card. So I've gone ahead and cut out a groove in the plywood curve using the jigsaw and I've left it 5mm here from the back of the curb and that's still got good stability so we, we can screw our metal reflector onto that 
and uh, we've got no chance of it snapping. I've drilled a small hole through the back here so we can fit our cable through and I drilled that hole first prior to me actually cutting out this uh, groove and what I've got here I've made myself a pigtail with the coax and it's probably 250 millimeters long something like that so uh, I don't need it overly long and I've gone ahead and crimped a uh, SMA connector on here and like I've said before you can buy these already made up on eBay quite cheap so there's no need going to the expense of buying crimpers if you're just making uh, one or two antennas so the plan is to actually feed this through the hole and then what I'll do I'll strip back the coax here and I'll solder it directly on to the element and then hopefully we can pull this back and the element will sit nicely in that groove and then I can uh, permanently apply it with some epoxy and of course because we're using copper tape we can solder directly onto that copper so we've got both wires soldered in place and yeah it's really quite strong so hopefully now I can just drill this back into the groove that I've cut out so a little bit of gentle persuasion and it's gone in quite tightly but uh, I'm still going to add a uh, line of epoxy down each side to uh, really hold it in place there the epoxy is all dry now but I've just found out that I've done a major fail and don't do what I did I'm now going to have to recrimp the SMA connector onto here because I forgot to feed it through the back reflector so there it is it's uh, finished and uh, what I'm going to do is give it a coat of paint to uh, tidy it up a little bit but uh, I've gone around with the Dremel again uh, try and tidy up the edges where I've cut out uh, with the metal and uh, remember back in the day when I used to mod PC cases cut out uh, windows and put perspex in as such you could buy uh, some plastic tubing that uh, had a split down one side and it would fit over something like this just to tidy it up because uh, it's near enough impossible uh, to cut out um, a metal surface like this and keep it nice and straight but it just uh, hide all these things you could put that on really finish it off nicely and uh, of course it wouldn't affect the Wi-Fi signals at all but um, with my non-existent uh, woodworking skills it's not uh, come out too bad at all so as always starting off we're using the Alpha card with its stock rubber duck dipole antenna and the access point is about 60 meters away going through three brick walls and I'm getting around 56 percent signal strength so it seems to have settled that so what I'm going to do now is connect up the parabolic antenna that we've just built So because this is extremely directional, I'm going to play around and try and find the sweet spot. So it seems to have settled on about 80% there. I can tell you that it's extremely directional, I only have to move it a fraction and it will drop down on that signal strength. But uh, it's a big improvement, so uh, I'm quite pleased with this. And what I'll do, I'll just plug in the other one that I built with the tubing rather the, uh, than the flat ones, see what that's like compared to this. So again, try and find that sweet spot again.
and it's probably about the same there's no difference there so there's no difference between the um, one that I built using the tube than the flat perspex seem to be performing the same so as you saw in the video there's no real difference between this one and the one with the tube but uh, although I do prefer the one with the tube I think it looks better I've just got to find some tubing that's around 28 millimeters diameter uh, as opposed to this which is 32 millimeters just so we don't have to bridge that gap in between there but uh, it didn't seem to hurt its performance in any way it performed just as well as this one but uh, I do prefer the look of this one I think when I do paint it black it's going to look uh, quite nice but uh, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, like I said parabolic antennas there's a lot to cover when you're talking about parabolic antennas you can't possibly do it in one video but uh, I will be making some future videos on parabolas and uh, easy ways to build them so I hope you enjoyed that and if you did as always give it a thumbs up if you did and uh, hopefully I'll see you for the next one